bap, bap. Wow. God. Get it. So, you know, before we get started. Do it. I want to say to everyone that's watching today, thank you. Because you could be doing anything else, but you decided to join us to have this conversation about inequality and bullying that takes place, we want to say in Hollywood. I was going to say Hollywood. But Same thing. All over the place. But we're talking specifically about it happening in Hollywood. Daddy, you want to start it off? Hey, right, baby. You and the flow. I'm going to follow your lead. Talk to me. Well, you know, while we were on this hiatus, um, I was doing some interviews. Right? Yes, you were. And I was doing interviews uh, pertaining to the Netflix deal and also um, this whole blackball situation. Mm -hmm. Because the lowball offers and the blackball situation, it all ties in together. Oh. And when you begin to explain it, how it ties in together, and it can be kind of challenging because you have people that look like you. They keep saying, why don't you just shut up and sit down and let it go? Why don't you just leave it alone? And because you're going to keep running your mouth, don't you know you're ruining it for yourself? And my response to people that are saying that is, if I wanted to shut up, I couldn't. Because it's in me. It is, that's something that's in me that, that I remember Rodney Perry saying, how do you do it? And I said, Rodney, it's, I would have to ask myself, how would I not? Because when you know what you're standing for, despite, despite the folks that are saying, no, 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 you must say, yeah, 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 yeah. Because when you... Isn't that a song? Baby, but I didn't know if you was going to catch okay, it, though. I just was but you caught it. Yeah, okay, give it to me, you. give it to me. Yeah. That's Destiny's Child. I wrote it, but that's a whole other story. Right, so right, right. When you have people that's constantly telling you no, but you know what you're standing for is right, you have to be fearless in your stance. And... As we said, you know, early in the week when we were doing the dancing and all, we were going to discuss the conversation that was had on The View. On The View, The Breakfast Club, you know, we might as well try to address as much as we can while we have them here. Let's try to address as much as we can while we have y'all here. And the call-in number is 404-832-2963, and we're going to try to get to as many of your calls as we can today. But the first point in hand, I want to address, we want to address, when I was on The View, and uh, I was explaining the situation, and our beautiful sister Whoopi stopped me and said, I wish you would have called me because I could have schooled you. And what we were talking about was I was not willing to work for free for a movie called Precious, and they wanted me to come overseas and promote this film. And when I say they, the they is Lee Daniels, Tyler Perry, Lionsgate, and Oprah Winfrey. And because those four entities were unable to bully me to come work for free, as I said on The View, the last eight years of my life, my family has suffered and my career has suffered because those four entities have set back and they let a lie brew and they let it build and build and build and said absolutely nothing. So when Sister Whoopi says to me on the show, you should have called me because I could have schooled you. Now Whoopi and I had a conversation before I went to The View. And I was very appreciative of Sister Whoopi for setting that up because I called her at home and I said, hey Whoopi, you got a minute? She said, give it to me. And I let her know what was going on. Within two days, we get a call from the producer from The View, mm -hmm. let's get it set up. I appreciate our sister for that. But the conversation Whoopi and I had before I got to The View, when Whoopi said to me, if you would have called me, I would have told you you go to Con and you tell them to bring your family over there and it could be a family vacation and I would have told you you go over there and you let those people see you. And I said, Whoopi, and I would have said to you, at what point do we have to say no? At what point do we have to say no? Because what you're saying to me is what's been said to me throughout my whole career. Let's keep our fingers crossed and hope for the next one. Let's hope for the next one. And if you get over here and they really like you, they might give you a chance. So this is a conversation that my sister and I had off camera, but I'm sure she's, she's not offended that we're having it publicly because she's that kind of woman. Well, she says what she means. So when we had that conversation before I even got to The View, I was very clear about my position and she was very clear about her position. And neither one of us was wavering from our positions. So when she said on The View, I would have schooled you. When we got off camera 
And Whoopi Goldberg and I went up into her dressing room, and she did not have to do this, y'all. This is why when I say she's a beautiful sister, and people say they, they clashed. We didn't clash. We just agreed to disagree. Because when we got to her dressing room, and we were sitting down, and this is what she said to me. She said, listen, I do. She said, but from the first time I saw you, I loved you. So I'm going to tell you right now, you've got to take some of this responsibility. And the real problem is, Monique, it, you're being ill-advised, <clears throat> ill-advised. You're not thinking for yourself. And the whole, the real problem is your husband. At that point, I had to grab Whoopi Goldberg's hands as we were sitting across the table from one another. And I said, sister, let me tell you about my husband because you're misinformed. And you're making statements that you really don't know what you're talking about. But let me fill you in when you say it's my husband. I said, see, I've had the big white manager. I've had the big white agent. I've had the big attorney firm all in Hollywood. And every one of them that I had when I would walk into those meetings, I would watch those people cheat me. I would watch them cheat me. And I would watch them, and they would say to me, we'll get them the next time, Monique. We'll get them the next time, Monique. I said, Whoopi, the reason why my husband is considered to be a problem is because when we're in those meetings with those executives, they can't answer his questions. And what normally happens is when they have questions, when we get into those meetings, there are normally no, no questions ever asked. It is whatever you offer us, that is what we accept, and you're supposed to keep on going. I said, that is why they're having a problem with my husband. I said, so when you say to me, that's the real problem, and I, I would never say this to anybody, I appreciate what you're saying to me because there was a woman that was talking to me out of love and out of fear. And I said to Whoopi Goldberg in her dressing room for some of the things she was sharing with me, which I will never share publicly because she shared it with me. But I said to her, what you're sharing with me makes me have to fight even harder. Because if not, the baby coming up behind us, she going to have the same story that me and you're having. I said, Whoopi, how come we can't sit back like Roseanne Barr can? How come we can't sit back like Rosie O'Donnell? How come we can't sit back like Ellen DeGeneres? How come we can't sit back like our white women counterparts? How come we're not given the same opportunities and the same paydays? And when I look at my sister... And she looks back at me and she says, I need you to let it go and just move on. And I said, Whoopi, because we keep letting it go is why they keep fucking over us. So I can't let it go. We've moved on. That's just life. You've got to move on. But you can't let it go when you've been bullied. And this is part of what we would refer to as cognitive, cognitive dissonance. It is when you understand in theory and in your mind that something internally is wrong. But your actions say to you, despite the fact you've been taught, never let someone bully you, never let someone cheat you, but it is a large entity. It's Oprah, it's Tyler, it's Will, it's Lionsgate, and you're supposed to say nothing. It's Lee Daniels. It's Lee Daniels. Oh, well, I ain't know it was them. Mm. Normally, you should be quiet. But, I mean, normally you should speak up, but as it pertains to them, you need to be quiet. And what we, and our motto is, we respect everyone, but we over-respect no one. And if regular common courtesy is not good enough, then unfortunately, that's what makes us difficult when we ask questions that they're not used to answering. And when I get faced with it's her husband. It's her husband. I want to tell y'all something about my husband. Nada made me take my glasses off, Daddy. Uh -oh. I want to tell y'all something about him because I'm getting a little tired of hearing, especially the black women that's in the business, that want to tell me about my husband. And when I have black women telling me about my husband that's in the business, but then I say, who is your husband? I don't have one. Oh, who are you in a relationship with? I don't have one. But you're taking out the time to tell me all that my husband's not doing. See, my husband being my manager, it was a position that he did not ask for. And he kept saying, Mama, that's not what I want to do. And I said, Daddy, I'm going to need you to do this. And then we had a meeting with the guy that was my manager at the time. And this white man said to me, Listen, our job is not to be in a relationship with you. The talent is never our best interest. 
our best interest has to be with the studios and the networks because, Monique, people like you, y'all come and go. So we have to have the relationships with Hollywood. That day he lost his job as my manager. That day. And that's when I had to look to my husband and he said, you don't have to say no more. So when people are beginning to question me about my husband, especially women that look like me. See, I don't know how many of your managers, when you hosted, your, hosted the BET Awards, I don't know how many of your managers wrote that show for you. See, my husband, he wrote that. Every word y'all heard me say on that stage that night, my husband wrote that. But I don't know how many of y'all managers do that. See, when my husband goes into those meetings with those executives, and what he says is, in a very gentleman way, I can't allow y'all to cheat her. See, the same thing Viola is saying is the same thing I'm saying. It's no different. It's no different. So when y'all want to question, what am I doing with my husband, who is also my manager, it, it saddens me that so many of our black women are brainwashed to believe your man can't do it. And when you ask, what are my credentials to manage? My credentials to manage are simply utilizing common sense. See, since I was 19, I was closing deals for folks that were four figures, and I was closing deals for people in their 40s and 50s at the age of 19, and now I know what it is to close from a four-figure deal to an eight-figure deal. Now, there's uh, people that have done way more than I, but a little young black guy from Baltimore, Maryland, mm. closing seven- and eight-figure deals, that's my credentials right there. That's my resume. And I say it with the utmost humility, because at the end of the day, I'm not connected to the world that uh, the Caucasians may be connected to. I'm not impressed by anyone because of your color, because of your cash flow. And if you are not comfortable with being respectful to someone named Monique who has earned it, I am very comfortable saying to you, we respectfully decline your most gracious offer. Because I'm not in a position, nor am I worthy, of being the person who is going to impose what I want to do over someone who has had a 30-year career. What my job is to do is execute what it is that she asked me to do. And you'll have to forgive me for not being the person and the man who, when my wife says, and my client, in quotes, mm. says, hey, I don't want to go out here and work and fly internationally and leave my family, and I'm not contractually obligated to do so. Because if I was to ask Lionsgate for a dime and offer them nothing, the world would look at me as if I'm crazy. So when they call, when Tyler calls, when uh, Oprah calls, I'm going to choose my family over fame because they were not offering any finances. And as opposed to me being the, the type of man who says to my wife and my client, hey, listen, don't you know how powerful they are? Come on. Don't you know if you don't go that they will hurt us and they will affect us? What I said was, you know what? I understand because the woman from Lionsgate wanted to uh, make me aware that, well, Halle Berry, she campaigned. Well, Halle Berry, she even fixed them breakfast. And as I explained to her, that is more than fair that Halle Berry would choose to do that. But you'll have to understand and please forgive us that Monique's not going to pull any cereal. Not a glass of orange <laughs> no juice, scrapple. not a cut of scrapple, <laughs> not an orange slice of sliver, because humbly she would feel like she was pandering for an award. Mm. And if someone else does it, that's their right. However, she's saying, I put more value on my family than I do on the fame, since you are offering me no finances. So mm. you'll have to excuse me for being so terrible that I would not allow my wife to get raped by the system and instead because historically black men have stood back and they watched their man their woman get raped by the master and then the cognitive dissonance comes into play and then they're mad at their wife for forcing them to watch the master for forcing them to watch the master rape them who is their wife and then say nothing and now you're angry at your woman because you didn't die that night mm. in protecting her. Not on my watch. And 
Here's why. When people say to me, why do you call him daddy? Because it's earned. Because I'm watching a black man be stronger than my father ever was. I'm watching a black man raise his family in ways that I never saw my father nurture his family. I'm watching a black man raise a grown-ass woman that there are some things that I missed along the way. So when y'all get caught up into that, y'all hear what he's saying. And one thing about me, as I told y'all a long time ago, I ain't never going to try to pump y'all no bullshit. I ain't never going to try to pump y'all something where I really don't know what's going on behind the curtain, but it look good and it smell good, so fuck it, we just going to go with it. That ain't what I do. So when I asked him to please do this show with me, I knew he had something to pour out into the people because it saved my life. Because I was that black woman that you couldn't tell me shit. Whoever, make the bag, whoever got the bag, make the rules. And I had that type of attitude because I did watch our sister Oprah Winfrey for years. And it, what I watched and what I learned was, fuck a man. Get that money. And that's why this is my third marriage. Really my first because this is the first time I've really known how to be into a relationship. But to have somebody stand by your side like that and say, I won't waver and I won't back down. I know why it's offending a lot of people. Not all because there are some brothers and sisters saying, y'all better stand tall. But I know why it offends some because we're not used to seeing it. And again, it may have happened before, but go back in history. Tell me about the black man that stood next to his woman when she said, I'm going through a crisis and this ain't fair. I'm not saying it's never happened. Just tell me about it. And when we come to this station and a young black journalist comes to us before we walk into this room to hug us, to tell us, listen, I'm a young man in this game. And I want to let you know, y'all keeping me on point and y'all making me be better because of what you're saying. And when I listened to you guys the other day talking to Charlemagne, I would have just appreciated, a.k.a. Lenard, wink, wink, mm. I would have just appreciated if he would have sat back and said, you know what, I really never thought about it that way. Because the reality is he never really thought about it that way. And what we must ask ourselves is this, how come there's not one black woman over there in the comedy game who has gotten a seven-figure, eight-figure deal. And what they're saying to the community is the people who follow you aren't valuable enough to entertain you, to pay you the monies. Why is it that they've changed the rating system for Amy Schumer, where they used to have a rating showing how well everyone liked it. Now everyone's writing in, speaking to their lack of appreciation. And this is not by no means anything against Amy, but... We're fighting for our lives, Come on. so we have to tell the truth as it is. And when you hear individuals like Oprah referring to herself ever so arrogantly as being the light amongst negativity, what happens is, if that is the truth, then why aren't you saying that what Monique is conveying is untrue? Why is that? See, we live in a world in which our brother Tyler Perry, we keep saying he reached out, he called us. He said that he was wrong and he said that in the midst of him being wrong, he was not going to condemn Oprah and say that she was wrong or Lee. He was just going to take responsibility for his part. And if that's the case, how can you if you stood with Tyler and he comes out and apologize and he be the only one? And what we ask of you is to simply say hashtag tell the truth, because if you notice if we are communicating these things about Tyler Perry saying that Monique was not wrong and that he would, if he was in her situation, wish someone would speak up for him. And then when we say, well, my Christian brother, our Christian brother, who you proclaim to be a Christian, as you handed T.D. Jakes a check for a million dollars and electrified that church, when would Jesus think it would be a good time to tell the mm. truth? And he thought that. As he said to us, y'all got it too hot on the streets right now mm. for me to tell the truth. But when I put out my next film, I'm going to tell the truth. Well, if he tells the truth on him, do you realize he's telling the truth on Lionsgate? He's telling the truth on Oprah and he's telling the truth on Lee Daniels as well. So all we're saying is we would accept that apology. And then we would ask, what are you going to do to help us get our lives back? for how you disrupted it with the truth. And when people say, because I want to address this too, Monique, you calling for a boycott was extreme. 
Don't you think that was extreme? You goddamn right it was extreme. It was so goddamn extreme, it's got us talking about it weeks later. And what I will say is, is inequality extreme? Is injustice extreme? Is racism extreme? So if those things are extreme, how do you match extreme with extreme? Should I have written a fucking letter? Should I have said, Netflix, y'all not being kind? And if you don't have a way in which to circumvent the problem, then shut up and get out of the way of the people who are going to address the problem. See, it's as Harriet Tubman said, I could have saved a thousand more if they knew they were slaves and they had shackles back then. Now we're under the illusion that we're not enslaved despite the fact that there are no shackles. And the shackles are intellectually they're placed on us because we believe that if we're not absolutely perfect in the way in which we present our argument, despite the fact that they imperfectly addressed you with information that doesn't make sense. When I'm watching BET and, and I see a blurb with Tank in the man cave talking about uh, is she helping herself during the interview? She needs to show the analytics. The question I would ask that talented brother is this. If you were white, good sir, where would you be with that voice that you had? Mm. Where would you be with all those smooth moves and the talents that you had? Where would you be, good sir? Because the, here's the irony of it. See, Brother Tank, he was on the Monique show. Brother Tank, we called on him because we said, hey, we would like you to host a show that we were trying to get done for Big Jim that was the equivalent of our own uh, American Idol, if you would. See, the individuals that are shooting jabs at Monique, see, y'all don't remember Will Packer when no one really knew who he was. And Marilyn Gill, the executive producer, said there's a young black producer that reached out to me and said he ain't getting the love and wanted to know could he come on the show. And I looked at her and said, come on now, what you think? And he was there promoting takers. See, there's a man named Tyler Perry that if Monique was so difficult, why would he have been on the show? And then he showed on our show his studio and he came on and expressed to Monique how Ty, how Spike Lee had spoke about his work as being what buffoonish was it? Yes, coonish and buffoonish. Coonish and buffoonish. And Monique offered the platform to have that discussion. And I believe Oprah did, too. And Oprah also took the time out to say to a gentleman that had come on our show and apparently had lied to her and brought her back, brought him back on the show to address him in front of the world about his lies. But now she's the light. She's the beacon and she's above having a conversation with Monique. Doesn't that sound like an individual potentially that does not want to bring to the light the real conversation? Because if you notice, Monique, she keeps walking forward. We're not on with billions of dollars. The only thing that we're on with is the truth. And what we say is the same people who are out there saying all the negatives when you find out the truth. And I guarantee you, you will find out the truth. Then what will you say? And I want to address. Address this. Shit, we addressing it. Address it. I'm addressing shit. Address I'm going to address it. Right I'm going to address it. Right I'm going to address it. I'm going to address it. When you get hits from people in the Netherlands and from our brothers and sisters in South Africa. South Africa, Netherlands. And they're saying, we're over here hurting for you, sister, to watch that you got to keep proving yourself to your own community. How much more proving do you have to do? And what happens is, for the brothers and sisters that feel like, oh, shut up and sit down, I, Sydney, and the ones that get it, we have to fight for you even harder. Yeah. We've got to fight for you even harder. See, there are people that are saying, oh, Monique, you disrespected Lenard <coughs> when you did the Breakfast Club. Because when you didn't think the tape was rolling, you said he was the man that walked his wife into the master's house and then came back and got her. No, I didn't respect that, brother. All I said was the truth. And folks were saying, well, you never answered this question. Can you sell out an arena? Probably not. And I don't say that with no fear, no nothing. That's some new shit that, just, that, that, that has jumped off recently. Tell me the arena Richard Pryor sold out. Tell me the arena that Eddie Murphy sold out. Tell me the arena. So this is something that's brand new. And now, if you cancel out arenas, you don't deserve to, be, to get the same respect. It's like, y'all, we keep changing the finish line. And when you got scared niggas that say, I want to make sure I'm in good, 
and I want to make sure they like me, I'm going to say what I need to say to make it look like I don't agree with Monique. I get it. That's why for me, for your wives, your daughters, your mamas, your grandmamas, your aunties, we're going to keep standing. And we're going to keep fighting. Because if not, guess what? When we get to the other side of history, our babies will still be having the same goddamn fight. And there's a level of respect you have to ask yourself. Does Lenard, a.k.a. Charlemagne, have when you got a real G out there named Master P that got to check him because he's speaking about one of his artists who has a fat ass? Is that how it went down? Yeah. Who has a fat ass and Master P got to check him to say, hey, man, that ain't how we do. See, that's a real G right there who respects women. And despite the fact of, you know what they're saying in hip hop and this, that, and the other, at the end of the day, You've got to be careful about who you're taking your food from, who you're getting your spiritual information from, because this is not about cash as much as this is about consciousness. Mm. Let's go to the lines, Daddy, because you know me and you can go all we can do day. It. Come on. Hey, my love. You're on with Monique and Sydney. Who's this and where you calling from? Hey, Monique. This is Brandon. I'm so surprised I made it through. Hey, Brandon. Hey. Better say it, Brandon. Because he has your best interest at heart. He's going to make sure you are taken care of because you've had the white manager. And what they do, they look out of their, they look, they had the best interest at heart for their brothers and sisters, their white counterparts. They didn't care about you, and you had one to tell you the truth. And you fired them, of course, you need to, so I'm happy you did that. <laughs> Thank you, Brandon. We love you, baby. We love you. Thank you, sir. Love you, too. Again, that's why we keep going. That's why we keep going. And unfortunately, people will get out there and say, oh, Monique has a bad reputation. And Monique, but can't nobody tell you what this reputation is? And may I? Yes, you may, moment. Daddy. What is also being said is now Monique wants you to jump on her bandwagon and what has she ever done for black people. Mm -hmm. But what I need to do is communicate some things to y'all. See, there's a man named Lee Daniels and everything that we're saying, hashtag, fact check, hashtag, verify what it is that we're saying. There's a man named Lee Daniels who was on the set of Precious, his own film. Let him tell you about the men who happen to be Caucasian, that while he's giving direction, they are talking while he is talking. And Monique stops it and says, would you all please be kind enough and respectful enough to listen to Mr. Daniels while he's communicating? Ask him, did that happen? Ask him, did Monique bring to his attention, not behind closed doors, but in front of the man who happened to be Caucasian, who said, who kept readjusting Lee Daniels lights for the scene and readjusted it and then she overheard him say what? What did he say? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm not going to I'm going to keep the lights the way I want to keep the lights. I don't care what he says. And at that point, she stopped it and said, Lee, he just said, I'm going to keep the lights the way he wanted. 
And this man had to shut down the production, which is why it got elevated to being $10 million, because he was being disrespected by a gentleman who happened to be Caucasian and she brought to his attention because the movie may not have looked like the movie that you saw had she not said anything, but he's not telling y'all about that. But ask him, did they have to shut down production because of that? See, she did make some demands, y'all. Yes, she did. She demanded that Lee, the baby that played the part in the SAG rules when you have babies, you must have twins because they can't be in front of the camera but for so long. So his twin babies, he was about to take them out into a snowstorm in New York and he was calling a cab and Monique, she made a demand. She said, Lee, you can't let that man take them babies out there in a cab. Please get him a car. And to Lee Daniels' credit, he got him a car. You know, Daddy, I, I, I want to address something because, you know, you see people's conversations in the room. And the people's conversation in the room, when they say, Monique is not relevant, and we haven't seen her in years. Well, Monique has been working for years. I've been in the comedy clubs. Been, we've done, what, three movies? Three movies. We've done what we've done. And the reason why we took our own route to go independently, because... When the offers do, d did come in, and they do come in, with the black ball label being put out there and that I'm difficult and demanding, because this is how we have to tie it in for y'all, that she's difficult and demanding, and here's this black ball over my head. So when the low ball offers, they're already low. They begin to come in even lower, and they, begin to, they began to get even more disrespectful because we know what the word is out there about you. Don't nobody want to work with you. And even though we know it's not true, that allows us to even lowball you even more. So what I had to say and what Sydney and I had to say was, you know what? When we get to the other side of history and they're reading the story about the women of color that were in Hollywood as we're reading the stories now, as we're telling the stories now, as we're telling these stories now, what side of history do I want to be on? And do I want to be on the side where they say, oh, shit. After a while, they was able to beat her down. They was able to wear her down. She had to go back and take those low wages. Or do I want to be on the side that says, we appreciate she never wavered? And at Millwood One, who people would call a troll, we love you, whoever you are behind that. Because the hurt and the hatred in your heart that allows you to mm. troll, it's why people shouldn't talk bad about you. They should just say, we appreciate the experience because we know what not to be. And we know how the individuals in here who are slaves in their minds. It's no way this big, black, fat woman could ever be relevant enough to pay attention to. See, we, we did an interview with, what were their names? That oh, did the that other is night. in my phone. And a lady had asked the question, do you think, Monique, that you are going to be the one to carry the message? Simply because there was a lady before Rosa Parks who had, it's not even important who their names are, but you can get it. Okay. But it's a, he, she said, because there was a lady before Rosa Parks who was in position, the same as Rosa, and chose not to give up her seat, but because she was pregnant and unwed, they chose not to go with her. And our reply is, how ridiculous in retrospect is that? Because you're not asking, was she right? You're saying she wasn't perfect. So she wasn't right to deal with the imperfect treatment that black people were, were suffering from. So in this same scenario, when you're dealing with individuals like when we were talking to the Breakfast Club, and they said, well, you're right, it was a shitty offer that they gave you. Well, how come we not focused on the shitty offer and you're focused on the perfect way that you believe that Moni should do it? However, you're unable to advise what that perfect way is. And that's what I think our issue has always been as a community. We'll always tell you what you're doing wrong, but we can't seem to tell you how to do it right. We'll always tell you how you should have said it, what you should have said. But then when you say, well, what would you do? Well, I, I mean, well, shit, I don't really have no response for it. So that's why we sit in the positions that we sit in when, again, we have to 
explain ourselves to our community, our worth. And that's the part that makes me go, y'all, it's 2018 and we're still trying to defend ourselves to us. We know what that other thing is across the street, but we're still trying to defend our worth to us. And then we get mad and say, this is not fair, this is not right. But we're doing nothing to make it fair or to make it right. And in a bit of irony, do y'all remember the movie called The Color Purple? Mm. Y'all remember that was an incredible actress in that movie. Her name was Oprah Winfrey. And in that particular movie, I believe there was a Caucasian lady that had walked up to her. Mm -hmm. And she said to her, uh, You want to be my maid? And I believe Oprah said what? Hell no. And then the white lady said, I'm sorry, wh what did you say? She said, I said, hell no. Now, how many of y'all in the audience were saying, you shouldn't have said that? Mm. You shouldn't have said that to her because that's a white lady and she approaching you about being a maid. Or did you say, you got damn right, hell no. Now, she got popped up in the eye over that shit. She did in the back of the head, too. Beep, beep, beep. They beat her down. They beat her. And they took her away. And then one day, she knew there was a God. Come on. Because who did she see in the store? Well, uh, Whoopi. Whoopi. And it's funny how art sometimes imitates life. Mm. Because Monique had to tell Oprah when she said, why don't you come out here and promote this movie for free? And she didn't say hell no. See, when Tyler called, Monique didn't say hell no. When Lionsgate called... Uh, and there was a lady who called before Tyler. No one said, hell no. We just said, we respectfully decline. On behalf of my client, she respectfully declines your most gracious offer to do work for you for free. Now, I don't know how you could be more polite than that. And last time I checked in 1863, that's when the Emancipation Proclamation was created. So... As far as I know, slavery is illegal. So why are you ridiculing her, those of you that are, Come on. for not doing something that is illegal and committing an act of slavery? And that's the question that those four entities don't want to answer. So when Netflix comes in with the lowball deal, they know exactly what they're doing. When the offers come in and they're low ball, they know exactly what they're doing. But the offers got even lower because they know they're saying, y'all know what this is. Y'all know, as Lee Daniel would say, the game. So now that we've set you down and we've put you on ice, now what you're going to do? It's like, guys, we're going to keep pushing forward. We're going to keep moving forward. And when people say, oh, Monique, you just keep speaking out. Aren't you afraid that you're going to permanently blackball yourself? Well, this, you gotta let them know you we ain't got no sense. We ain't got no sense. See, Daddy. You you but see, y'all under the impression that we under the impression that we think we got sense. No, Not a goddamn thing. Listen, we know we don't have no sense. We know <clears throat> there's a biblical story about David and Goliath. Tell me about the time. You had the big black woman that says, you know what? Not only do I want to go up against Goliath, but I want to go up against Oprah, Tyler, Lee, Lionsgate, Will Packer, because I ain't got nothing to do but just start a fight with them. Or has historically the powerful imposed themselves on the powerless? Because the question I would ask you is, what did Monique do when she said, no, I'm not going to work for you because I don't have a contract with you? And again, to finish the story in Paul Harvey fashion, the rest of the story with art and imitating life. As Oprah came in the store and got the products for, I'm sorry, as Whoopi got the products for Oprah and she knew there was a God when she saw that day. Oprah said, I'm sorry, Whoopi was going to school Monique on how to conduct business. And Monique so eloquently and lovingly said to our icon and beautiful sister, Whoopi Goldberg, if they had something on me, they would have sued me.
because they would want to make an example, as she should have been made an example of. But guess what? It never happened because they had no legal connection to her. Hashtag make it make sense, y'all. And and I want to say this. Say it. Because when you go on the history for mm -hmm. the sisters that had to take a stand, mm -hmm. and you see how they left here, right? Mm -hmm. And for those of you that are saying, Monique, you know, we believe you'll make it better for the next one's coming, but it might not get to you. I don't believe that because we believe in truth and we believe in honesty. And we've seen the stories too many times where that person stood and they did not back down. And you see how it ended up in the end. You see how it ended up in the end when they don't back down. And I'm not going to back down. We're not going to back down when it comes to Oprah Winfrey. And I need to say this out of my mouth because people are saying, oh, we got a beef. And they clashed. And, and I watched that interview that she did with Global Grind. And what I've never done is, when it came to me doing the interviews, not my, not my comedy show, but interviews, I've never said anything bad about our sister. All I've said was the truth. But when I hear a woman attach negativity and a dark place to my name, that's when I have to say, Oprah, do you really want to have this conversation with me? Because when you talk about being the light, and when you talk about you have to rise above it, See, I know people will say, oh, Monique, this, is, this happened years ago, but the effects are still happening right now. Right now. A woman that is such the light would not have blindsided me and had my parents on her show. A woman who was full of the light would have called her sister up and said, hey, I got to have a conversation with you because I wasn't all the way honest. A woman that brings the light would not allow another black woman to be thrown under the bus and sits back and says absolutely nothing when she's a part of the people calling, trying to get me to work for free. So I don't have an issue. I don't have an issue about the money I was paid from Precious. I signed up for that. Mm -hmm. What the issue is, is these four entities set back and because I did not allow them to bully me. They said, we'll show you what happens when you don't come to the hotel room. So Oprah Winfrey, when you get courageous enough, and I hear what you're saying. I won't stoop to that level. See, it's easy for us to say, well, because she has all of this money, mm -hmm. we got to listen to her. And she'll use words like negative, darkness, and I won't stoop to that level. We're not asking you to stoop anywhere. We're asking you to stand. Stand. And what we would ask you is because here's the thing. It's not as if she hasn't earned the right to be looked at as a prosperous businesswoman. She has. But if you want to get the truth and find out what Chicago thought about Oprah, there's a lost video of a show that Oprah Winfrey had done where they had let Oprah know her real feelings. Ask her when she's going to show it to the public because they're going to call out facts to her and how she gets down. See, if y'all remember closely, for the length of time that she was on TV, how many people of color did you really see occupying her screen? So much so that when she went to make the transition to the own network, she thought she was going to stay in alignment with them. I believe there was Sister Roseanne Barr. Susie no, it was o Rosie O'Donnell. Rosie, that's what I'm saying. And say. it was Sister Susie Orman. There you go. And, and then it was the, the animals. Because you know I get the names wrong. I know, baby. Okay, shit. so when you see that, then all of a sudden it didn't work. And then you had to resort to someone that during the prime of Oprah's show to the end, she would have looked at Tyler Perry's work as buffoonery. But they had to partner up because someone at Discovery said, if you watch the business paradigms, you'll notice that from Fox to CW to uh, uh, um, UPN, mm -hmm. they built their networks off the, black, off the backs of black viewership. That is the business paradigm. Hence... Look at the programming now. So this is not to speak in reference to her as being a terrible individual, but it can show you how terrible that the business is, that it fails to make you or fails to allow you to keep the connection with your community because you need to keep your community, you need to keep your connection with your cachet and your cash. Oh, well, damn. And let me say this to y'all, too. Because I see people saying, but not Oprah, 
but not you don't want to say nothing and that's why our sister has been allowed to get away with it for as long as she's been allowed to get away with it see I'm not the only one I'm not the only one that woman has said don't you know how powerful I am see when I didn't allow them to bully me the first thing that she did was this was the first thing when I didn't allow the bullying to happen when she called me up she called like a sister friend and she called with the girl what you wearing to the Oscars okay that's what I got. When she called me up about my brother, girl, your brother then called me and he want to come on the show. She never one time said anything about my mother, but what that woman was showing me, in my humble opinion, bitch, when you don't do what I tell you to do, I'm going to show you who I really am. Or so it would seem. So to have my mother on that show after I told that woman. And see, this is what, when Global Grind, be courageous enough to ask her the right questions. Don't be afraid to say, it seems like you're taking the high road. Be courageous enough, Global Grind, to ask the woman the right questions. Because when you have my mother on your show, after I told that woman, I said, listen, me and my family, we're not cool right now. Especially me and my mother. Me and my mother's relationship has taken a hit. And that woman shared some things with me about her family that, again, I ain't that type of person. I will never share it. Now, she may have put it in the list of things I say to everybody about my family, or it may have been some real shit. I don't know. However, me and that woman had a sister-to-sister -sister conversation. But with her being powerful, what she showed me was, when you don't do what I tell you to do, I will have your mother on the show. I will have your drunk father on the show. And I don't owe you an apology because I'm Oprah Winfrey. And when you have other black actresses in a setting speaking to her in reference to how they wished their parents got a chance to see them on the Oprah Winfrey show because she was considered the beacon of light, but because she seemed to only focus primarily on our, her car Caucasian counterparts, you know it's real. But it's difficult to come out because people are afraid of their livelihood of being affected. However, if we consider, if Monique had said nothing, if Wanda Sykes had said nothing, if Octavia Spencer had said nothing, what's our other girl? Viola Davis. If Viola Davis had said nothing, when they're speaking in reference to Chandra, Chandra Rahm, making a hundred million dollars. People will say, well, that's a hundred million dollars. Why are we worried about her? Well, there was her, a white counterpart who happened to be a car. We're in a society now that we refer to Abraham Lincoln as the great emancipator, and he was a racist, okay? He is a man that said that he believed there is a superior race and an inferior race, and he just assumed that the white man was the superior race. He's the same man that communicated, I don't care about if we free all the slaves, some of the slaves, or none of the slaves. Whatever is best for the union, that's what I'm going to do. So when we have individuals calling him, they're calling themselves, we are the uh, party of Lincoln, the great emancipator, look deep into the history when the man that freed us was a racist, what we got coming, y'all? What we got coming, and I want to address something else, too, because I, I have to address Mr. Will Packer, Daddy. And when y'all say, Mo, it seems like you got a problem with everybody. No, I don't. Just the bullies. Just the bullies. Just the bullies. And Oprah Winfrey happens to be a bully. Lee Daniels happens to be a bully. Tyler Perry happens to be a bully. Will Packer happens to be a bully. Y'all know I ain't saying nothing crazy. And when I read a tweet that Will Packer put out there that I would never disrespect my queen. And let me tell y'all something. That's a bunch of bullshit. Because if you ask any black woman that's ever done a movie for Will Packer, just ask her. How much you got? Just ask how her much how you much get? you got. And if you go to the Instagram page, see, we put the video out there where this black man values his black queen so much. He had us in subpar Conditions where our trailers exploded and they exploded because from our understanding it was faulty wiring but you could also smell gas the all whole, through all through it so when you when you when you make statements like that and you say oh how I protect my black woman well not in those board meetings not in those board meetings see none of our sisters on girls trip made a million dollars 
None of our sisters on Almost Christmas made a million dollars, nor any of our brothers. So when you have a black man that's speaking up, and when he did speak with us, initially everything was queen and everything was my black people and everything was the love of blackness. But when he came out with this after about the third conversation where his ass was getting caught up in a bunch of shit, I won't stand for it because I'm a Christian man. What? Right. And, and just to give you again a little insight about this woman named Monique who's mm. so selfish because she only is worried about her Netflix deal. See, this is the same black woman who had to pull up a black producer named Will Packer to say, why are you disrespecting the black director, David Talbert, by giving me directions in front of everybody when he's the director? And ask David Talbert because they had to sit down with Will and have that conversation with him. And to show you how much of a freedom fighter this sister is, despite the differences that her and Will Packer had, there was a man on the set who happened to be Caucasian that referred to David and Will as boys. And she had to let that man know, please don't refer to those gentlemen as boys. They grown ass men and they probably older than you. So do me a favor and had to pull Will as well as David into the conversation for complete transparency. See, where we're from, that's called being a G. Mm -hmm. That's called being thorough. That's being about your business where you're going to put to the side that you got a discrepancy with Will Packer and based upon the way that he handled yourself, he handled himself because your love for our community and what that man said supersedes any differences because to this day what I'll say is if I saw Will Packer, if I saw Oprah, if I saw Tyler, if we saw Lee and all they had to do was what y'all trying to tell Monique, some of you like Cheryl Underwood who still Monique calls you a legend that should be getting paid and you know you're not getting paid what you should get paid but still to this day we would say we love them. This is not about being angry with them and disliking them. No, we love them. We are loving them so much. We're having an open conversation with the community to show you the type of love of God that they really had. Mm. Because if they really have the love of God and they're really the Christians that they'll say, ask Tyler Perry when he's going to come out and say what he said to us in private. See, Steve Harvey said, oh, I'm the one who gave him your number. I gave him your number. Well, when we came to the studio, our engineer here, James, had communicated to us. Did you get the call? Because he called the studio looking for you. Well, we got the call. But with brother Steve Harvey didn't call Tyler Perry back to find out, hey, how did it go? What was the conversation? Even after the interview, I wondered, Steve, did you ask Tyler, did you say the, th the things that Monique said that you said, did you say that she wasn't wrong? Because you do understand if that's what you said, that's going to turn this whole thing upside down. And it's going to show the community that she's been lied on for the last eight years. Did you communicate that? Hashtag y'all fact check. Come on, let's take this call. Hey, my baby, thank you for being so patient. You're on the line with Monique and Sydney. Who's this and where you're calling from? Okay, then. That may have been Oprah. <laughs> okay, she may have got a little nervous when we connected her. That's all right. Like, That's all right. We'll we be right here. We'll right, take, we'll take this one. Hey, you're on with Monique and Sydney. Who's this and where you're calling from? Hey, how you doing? Hey, baby. How you doing? This is Jason. I'm a stand-up comedian. Hey, Jason. How you doing, baby? Yes, baby. Okay. I just want to say, as a fellow actor, comedian, and truly uh, coming up, uh, just thanking you for the way that you have paid for us black people to make it. I want to say to you, I'm standing with you. You keep standing. Mm -hmm. Believe God for everything that he is doing for you. Don't worry about them folk, because you're going places, baby. I still love you. I thank you so much, and I just had to say that. Thank you, my baby. We love you back, brother. Thank you. Okay, don't worry about a little nervous Charlemagne either. We're going to deal with that. I'm dealing with him in New York. He's a punk. <laughs> <laughs> Behave yourself. We love you, brother. Take it. And, and, you know, I don't think, too, that what people didn't realize...
even when uh, Gary Owens came out, and when you hear this brother right here saying, you know, we're going to deal with that. It's like in our communities, when we love, we love. And when we hate, we hate. But when we love, we love. And you have some black men saying to these other black men, you got to explain yourself. You got to explain what you mean when you talk to our sister like that. You got to be clear. And then when I see a video of Lenard, uh, a.k.a. Shalomon the God, when I see a video of this black man running from another black man, from being punched in his, did he punch him in the face? <laughs> I believe it was several brothers. I believe it was there, several of them. They punch him. They punch him. They punch him in the face. And then he tried to jump over a car and you ran down the street. Now, when you have the name of Charlemagne de God, you were supposed to put your dukes up. Because the gods don't run. The gods say, I either gave her ass whipping or I took her ass whipping. So that's why for that brother, we have to love him even harder because we realize the poison that's been put in him and we realize the poison that he puts out. And please don't do nothing or anything to someone because of what they feel, because you got to understand the society that we live, that we live in, we have been taught to hate ourselves. Mm. This is why we don't go to Beverly Hills and burn it down when we don't get the verdict we want. We burn down our own community. So what type of person would do that unless they were sick? Mm -hmm. What type of person would do that unless you were at your wits end? Somebody treated you wrong at work, your man did you wrong, and now you done turned around and put your fist in your own eye. Mm. <laughs> you done socked you in the chin. Who would do that? Who? A community that has been corrupted by a little black book sold on a white blue eyed Jesus mm -hmm. whose origin was that of a Jew. But yet you're saying you're Christians. Now, I know I've gone too far, but I've done nothing but tell the truth. So when you start seeing the same community that taught the black community about the Jesus out there that we following and spending billions of dollars giving to preachers and and so forth and so on while the white community is making an exodus from that very religion that they taught us you have to say let's pay attention let's not drink the kool-aid because as i watched the women behind jim jones there was something that was effectively communicated and it was that not only were the people who followed jim jones duped but the people who followed Jim Jones were duping Jim Jones into believing that he was more than what he was. And ladies and gentlemen, when you put Oprah Winfrey on a pedestal as if she has no expiration date, you're doing her a disservice. We as a community must love our icons enough to tell them when we realize that the I and the con is what we can't stand for. Mm. I con. Because that's what happens all the time. We get in con by individuals because of their stardom and fame and not because of the substance of what they're bringing to the table. Let's take this call, Daddy. Hey, you're on with Monique and Sydney. Who's this and where you're calling from? Hi, Auntie and Uncle and Auntie. Hey, What's up, baby? That's right. <laughs> that's right. We weren't going to get out here today without talking to you. You our last call. Talk to us. Oh, my goodness. Well, this is Peaches right here. Hi, Clint. Hi, how are you? Hey! I'm never here, but I'm here today, and I'm so glad that I'm here. We're glad to hear from you. Talk, Talk to, to us. us. You know, I don't know if Monique told you, but the first time when Reba and I, we went to, well, not the first time we went to Radio City, but the first time we saw Monique perform at Radio City, she was on stage, and she said, you know, I'm thirsty, and so she asked the staff of Radio City to someone to bring her a glass of water. And so the person who brought her the glass of water on stage happened to be a lesbian. Someone in the audience made a statement, said something derogatory against that person. Monique said, look, let me tell you something. I don't play that, okay? You are not going to talk about someone because of their sexual preference. That is not my forte. Maybe my, no, not exact words, but that's what she meant. And I fell in love with her deeper 
at that point. So I just wanted to share that with you. And also, Monique, I want to tell you, you know, Reba and I, we are backing you 150%. 150,000. Not because we met you and we know the type of person that you are, but you know what hurts me is the that. fact that when we see our people not sticking together, that hurts me. When we see our people turning on each other and not even considering like what they're saying, not thinking about what they're saying, but like, you know what, hey, um, I don't understand why Monique is, is, is acting that way. And why I don't can't get over Why can't she get over What are we watch? talking about? What was that show we watched? E. 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 The guy Justin oh, on there. Yes. He said, you know, just throw a little shade. Let me find out from, from, um, from Ayala Van Zandt. Why can't, why can't Monique get over it? Yes. That's, this was yesterday. Uh-huh. So go ahead. And <laughs> she, she didn't. She didn't throw you under the bus. No, she didn't. She didn't. She did. She said maybe, maybe Monique doesn't see it a certain way. She said, she said, but that isn't even the case. She said whatever her way of seeing it is, maybe, maybe we don't see it the same way. There you go. It. That's right. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And right after that, he turned around and said, you know, Ayanna, I have a question. How come I have a problem getting over things? I said, ain't this some shit? You want, you want my auntie to get over shit, but you can't get over your own shit. Come on now. And you know, when they were sitting there talking to Ayanla, what they should have asked Ayanla was, and what was you on Oprah's issue again? Because Oprah and Ayanla had an issue, as well as Oprah and Whoopi had an issue. Um, they were they weren't communicating but here. And also Whoopi and Oprah Come on now. They had a thing going on at one time. I remember seeing that on Oprah's show. And they weren't speaking for you. And they weren't speaking for I just them. typed in that um in your um your your your, your periscope chat. There I have I have read several articles where several Hollywood actors hate, not can't stand, not don't like, hate Oprah. And 90% of them were rappers or um, hip hop artists, you know. And and a lot of the um um is and and what what I appreciate about you is you don't hate her. No, she's still your sister. You mm -hmm. still love her. Mm -hmm. All you want her to do is just tell the truth and knock this shit out of the water wherever it is. The water that she made around you. Come on. That's now. it. And I, and I, and we we thank y'all, my babies, because y'all know we're at the end of the show, and we could not have. We would not, we, we wouldn't have slept back. well had we not talked to y'all. That's right. We love y'all, my babies. And I think what's happening too is, once people actually take the time out to play it back, to play back these relationships, to go back in history, go back in time, you would have to ask yourself, why is it that Oprah Winfrey had a problem with Ayanna Van Zandt? Why is it that Oprah Winfrey had a problem with Whoopi Goldberg? Why is it that Oprah Winfrey has a problem with Monique and Monique has a problem with Oprah Winfrey as those women had a problem too? And just just on a little side note, with all the people that she has on her network, I believe, what is it, Nate Burkis and all the other individuals that she has on there, why is Ayanla the only one that you see her showing the world what she did for her as it pertained to her home? She has to show the world, this is what I've done for this black sister, as opposed to this black sister being the person who's showing individual their path of life. So when you pay attention to a woman that pats herself on the back and says, I am a warrior of light. <coughs> I'm a warrior of light. She's a warrior of lies. No. What we going to say is this. That's why I got you, Daddy. What we going to say is this about Oprah. She has a good. And when you want to see more of that good, show the world Oprah what it means to tell the truth and stand for what's right. Because I believe Tyler Perry is going to come out and tell what's right. I believe he's going to do it. So why don't y'all get ahead of it and show the community that even icons can be conned into believing mm. that they're more than human. And when you realize that you are not, you had to let go of the hubris mm. and say, you know what? Let me drop my arrogance and be a regular person for a change and get an opportunity to reconnect 
with my community by simply telling the truth about this sister so the world will know she did nothing wrong. And this is why, Daddy, I appreciate you being my daddy and my manager. Because let me, let me apologize for what I just said. I don't want to say that Oprah is a warrior of lies because that's unfair. But what I will say is, could Oprah please come out and tell the truth? Could you co please come out and tell the truth? Because what we're saying is, it only makes you more human when people know that you are a human and you tell the truth. We won't be mad at you because you told the truth. It's just difficult to have your back when you're allowing a lie to keep going on. Mm. Baby, that's our time. Baby, that's our time. Listen, we want to thank y'all. We want to thank y'all. And what we do want to say is keep speaking up. Keep speaking out. Keep on pushing forward. We thank y'all, babies, because, again, y'all could have been doing anything other than listening to Monique and Sydney. But y'all chose to take your time out to play with us today. So like my daddy always says, the mind is like a parachute. It is no good unless it's open. We love y'all. For free. Mwah. Bye, my babies. Thank y'all, my sweetnesses. They said we need a daily show, Daddy. Hey, your, your mouths to the universe's ears. Speak up, speak up. That's it.